There's been a lot of concern lately over the future of Dreams. Sales of the game started off strong when Dreams first launched in February this year, but quickly slowed after its first few weeks. With over 1.1 million registered Dreams users, it is shocking to see only about a thousand active users online at any given time. Concern over the sales viability of Dreams is nothing new. Dreams had a very lengthy development period over many years, and by the time the game was finally ready to be released, a lot of the initial hype had passed, and it does seem as though Media Molecule has been struggling to recapture the magic ever since. So, with all that in mind, is it time to panic? First things first, give Sony a little bit of credit. This is a publisher who is well known for investing in innovative and experimental game experiences. Don't imagine Dream's modest sales were much of a surprise to the powers that be at Sony. After all, it's a game that is building towards the future. This is just a start. You know, I've been saying that, you know, Dreams is going to be 10 years of project and not 10 years in development, uh, but uh, 10 years after the launch, you know, I cannot wait to see how this platform develop and how this tool will enable the future creators of you know video game that everybody will enjoy so i really like to see a lot of people from around the world to make something very cool using dreams and uh, meet each other and create a band of uh, you know teams uh, on the internet and uh, uh, create something really great for other people to enjoy so enjoy the show thank you that was shuhei yoshida former sony entertainment president his newest job title and how that may relate to Dreams is very interesting, but we'll get to that later. Here is one of Sony's most well-known executives talking about a fabled 10-year plan that's in place for Dreams. At this point, it's important to remember that we're only 7 months into what is meant to be a 10-year life cycle. Recently, the Dreams community has been discussing a lot of interesting ideas on how Media Molecule could recapture the missing magic, such as online multiplayer, making the game free to play, and releasing it on PC. These are all great ideas, but not necessarily the right ones for 2020. We here at Ugly Surfer Gaming have got some very interesting theories as to what this 10 year plan might look like, and how exactly Shuhei Yoshida's new job title might fit into this. Super quick recap of year 1 for those of you just joining us. After much delay in a lengthy early access period, Dreams finally released to the public on February 14th 2020. Since then, Media Molecule established both the MP Awards and DreamsCon, which seem to be fixed as annual events to both celebrate and promote all of the amazing community content being made in Dreams. In terms of updates, Media Molecule have released various asset packs, UI improvements, and some tiny new levels. In July 2020, Dreams was updated with the highly anticipated PSVR update much sooner than anyone anticipated, meaning players could now both play and create Dreams in virtual reality. At the time of this video, Media Molecule haven't announced any other confirmed plans for Dreams, so everything past this point is speculation, and the further ahead we get, well the more crazy our ideas become. We still don't have a confirmed release date for the PS5, but the industry is expecting a release sometime in November. How crazy is it that we're only two months away and we have next to no information of what the PS5 version of Dreams looks like? You can expect the PS5 version of the game to have better frame rate, faster loading, new tools for creators to implement the DualSense technology, and other basic improvements at a bare minimum. Everyone's keeping their expectations in check, but I think Media Molecule's PS5 plans are going to shock us in a way no one has predicted. Recently, the sad news that Media Molecule co-founder Alex Evans is leaving Media Molecule came with the interesting tidbit that what the studio is working on currently was going to blow our minds. I think this is in reference to their PS5 plans, and that the update is going to be much grander than anyone has imagined. A soft reboot launch for Dreams on PS5, with online multiplayer included, giving you the ability to play Dreams with friends much like you could in Little Big Planet, along with a host of other next gen features, is the perfect way to recapture the initial excitement we all had in 2013. We're going to be talking much more about Dreams PS5 update in another video, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to not miss out. Rounding off year 2, there's a good chance we'll be getting some sort of story DLC. 
Media Molecule have openly toyed with the idea of releasing periodic expansion packs based off of IPs. Just as an example, imagine a short, stylized Uncharted game made entirely in Dreams, which also gives players a variety of pre-made tools and models to more easily make third-person shooters. This is something Media Molecule can explore across multiple Sony IPs and different genres. Year 3 is where the 10 year plan really starts to take shape. Dreams is still growing, and more importantly, Media Molecule is still making stronger connections with different members of the community. That's going to be important a little later on. For Sony though, at this point, Dreams is all about supporting the hardware. For the PS5, and for something else. It's no secret Sony are working on some sort of sequel to the PSVR. The release date for a device like this is a tightrope. Sony isn't going to want to wait too long into the PS5's life cycle now that it's invested in the technology and it's in the middle of building a user base. But at the same time, they aren't going to want to launch it too close to the PS5's initial release date because a lot of people aren't likely to be able to afford two big priced items so close together, especially in the current climate. 2022 seems like the sweet spot. Now, the biggest hurdle to overcome in any peripheral product to a games console is having enough games to make it seem like a worthwhile investment to the customer. When it comes to VR, Dreams has the potential to be a goldmine for Sony, and that's exactly why I think Media Molecule prioritized the VR update over online multiplayer. Sony wants the Dream community building thousands of VR experiences ready for its next VR entry. This is where we really start heading into the unknown, but I think it's at this point Sony's focus switches from the hardware and onto Dreams itself. Remember earlier when I said Yoshida is the former Sony Entertainment president? That's because he actually stepped down from that role at the end of 2019 and took a new role as the head of the newly formed PlayStation Indies initiative, something which is meant to focus on, and I quote, Nurturing external, independent creators making new and unexpected experiences. AAA development by its very definition is expensive and therefore risk averse. The reason indie games are so important is because you never know where the next big idea is going to come from. I think Dreams in its community is going to play a massive part of this initiative and why even after taking on this new role, Yoshida still seemingly has close ties to the project. As we've seen from the MP Awards and Dreamscom, Media Molecule are fostering closer relationships with very specific creators. One or two of them have even been hired to work on Dreams. Maybe I'm wrong, but you know, I think some of the designers we've got here that come from the Little Big Planet community might not even be working in the games industry necessarily. No, no, no. I don't know. Maybe that's too arrogant. <laughs> I don't know. But that's, well, we know they got away. We, that's certainly we get, that's away always and... been like a, a very concrete bullet point, if you like. Yeah. For me, it's yeah. just like giving people the opportunity to break into these sort of walled off industries without having necessarily the privileges of going to university or whatever, you know. I think it's very possible the Media Molecule will approach certain creators and teams to make content using Dreams with their guidance and support, but this content won't be released along with the normal community content. Instead, these creations would be released independently either on PlayStation Network or as an expansion pack under the banner of PlayStation Indies. This is going to result in fresh experiences like Limbo or Journey, but maybe Sony has its fingers crossed that they'll stumble across the next Minecraft. Stranger things have happened. In short, the much speculated monetization of dreams will become a reality, but only for a lucky few. If you're a budding creator not yet on Media Molecule's radar, that may sound a little disheartening, but don't go anywhere yet, because this could only be the start. Only a few years ago, a PC release for a PlayStation exclusive would have been unthinkable, but with the release of Horizon Zero Dawn on PC, anything is possible. Some people are going to think I'm crazy having the PC release this late into the game, but I believe the PlayStation exclusivity of Dreams is important for pushing PS5 sales, PSVR 2, and the PlayStation Indie initiative in its first few years. Just like with Horizon Zero Dawn, Sony wants to get everything it can out of its games for its own brand before porting them anywhere else. The PC release, when it happens, will be massive for Dreams and become Media Molecule's focus for the next three years. This is where Dreams will really hit its stride in terms of activity and content production. And that's where things are going to get crazy.
A PC version of Dreams paves the way for what I like to call Dreams Pro. Dreams Pro would be a radical expansion to the base game at either a massively increased cost or more likely a subscription model. Why so expensive? You'll see. While Dreams is, at its core, a game targeted towards a broad consumer market, as the name suggests, Dreams Pro Edition would be closer to a development engine aimed at professional game developers or creators who are experienced with the Dreams tools and are ready to take the next steps. Dreams Pro could contain scripting, coding, and other complex, more traditional game development tools, but crucially, the ability to export projects outside of Dreams independently. Subscribing to the Pro version of Dreams would grant users a license to export creations outside of Dreams and monetize them freely. To put this into perspective, music albums made in Dreams could be sold on Spotify, movies to Amazon, or even video games on Steam. It may sound like pure fantasy on my part, but if you've been paying attention to Media Molecule as closely as I have these past few years, you'd know it's not that crazy. In an interview before launch, they acknowledged that licensing was something they had planned, before correcting themselves to say it was something they would eventually like to do. As for the Dreams consumer product we know and love, this would be the perfect time to make it free to play. Sony now has a new revenue stream with the Pro version, and the free version of the game becomes a free trial or advert for the Pro version of Dreams. This is Dreams' natural evolution. It begins a modest retail release in 2020, designed to support Sony's hardware moving into the next generation of consoles. From there it becomes a linchpin of Sony's PlayStation indie development, helping to build new and exciting experiences. A PC release grows the user base, which sets the stage for Dreams Pro and gives players the freedom to use their creations however they want. From game to game engine. The year is 2030. We all drive flying cars and the lingua franca is Moonman talk. For Dreams, business is booming. A song made entirely in Dreams hit the charts and went viral. Movies made in Dreams are bought and paid for by various companies in what has come to be known as the Stream Wars. And little Timmy? He can design his own frisbee, 3D print it, and imagine what it would be like to throw it around outside if nuclear oblivion hadn't devastated the land. Fingers crossed not all of these predictions will come true. If Dreams does grow anywhere close to how I've imagined, some sort of sequel is inevitable. What form this might take is almost impossible to imagine at this point, but its announcement would be the perfect way to end a glorious 10 years. I hope you enjoyed our trip down Fantasyland. The future of Dreams is very topical right now, and as you can see, we are very optimistic about its future, but we want your input as well. Do you think our 10 year plan is on the money, or have we become like Charlie Kelly on a bad day? Thank you for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. We are Ugly Sofa Gaming and we upload new videos every day from Dreams. If you like our content, please hit the subscribe button, like the video or leave a comment. Share the video in your favourite corner of the internet. Any one of those things really helps us out. Thank you very much.